What's up, everybody? Todd Welch here from Amazon Seller School. And today we're going to be diving into how to open up your Amazon Seller Central selling account for a USA based seller. Now, as we're going through here, I'll point things out that might be different if you're an international seller, but this will be primarily going through for USA based sellers. So Let's go ahead, flip my screen around and take a look at opening your Amazon Seller Central account. All right, so this is where you sign up for selling on Amazon and getting your Seller Central account. Go to sellercentral.amazon.com and you're gonna get a website that looks similar to this one here, Start Selling with Amazon. Now you've got a couple different options here. You have sign up, and learn more. And if you want to just sign up and pay the $39.99 a month for a professional selling account, I recommend you take that approach, assuming you can spend the $40 a month. Now, some people are going to say, oh, I don't want to sell, spend $40 a month to have an account, et cetera, et cetera. But you need to look at this as opening an, a business. You are setting up a business. $40 a month to start your business is not that much money. So I would recommend signing up for a professional seller account rather than the free selling account because Amazon's going to look that, at that as more of a professional business. Put yourself in Amazon's shoes Having a professional selling account means you are a professional, you're not an amateur. But if for whatever reason you don't want to sign up for a professional selling account, you can click on this learn more button. And then as you scroll down here, they kind of gotten it hid down below here. Here it is. Now they moved it all the way to the bottom here. Just have a few items to sell, sign up to become an individual seller. And there you can sign up for the free account. But again, what I recommend is signing up for the professional selling account and be a professional seller. If you're not planning on selling for a while, go ahead and sign up for the free account. You can convert to the professional account later on without a problem. But if you're planning to get started selling right away, go ahead, just sign up for the professional account. So let's go ahead and click on the sign up button. You're going to get to a page like this. Now, if you already have an Amazon account, you can use that for your business as well. But I do not recommend that you use the same account for your business as you do to make your personal purchases. So if you're buying on Amazon all the time, do not use that same account because this is going to be your administrator account that you're signing up for. And you don't want to use your administrator account daily logging in because the administrator account has access to everything. So if somebody hacks that account, they have access to everything on your Amazon account. So once you have your administrator account for your business, you can then set up and create sub users. And that's what you're going to use to sell on Amazon every day. But if you're buying on Amazon as well and you use that same account to sign up for a Seller Central account, when you are logged in to buy, you're also logged in as the administrator for your business. And so if somebody hacks your buying account, they also now have access to your seller account and we don't want that. So you want to set up a seller central account specifically for your business. All right, so go ahead and click on create your new account. And they're gonna ask for a few things here. They're gonna ask for your name, your email address, a password for your account, and then to re-enter your password. So let's go ahead and enter that in here. and we'll enter any password that you want to use. And now that you have that, it has to be at least six characters. I recommend making it as difficult as possible. And if you're not already using a program like LastPass, 
to generate random passwords for you, I suggest getting one like LastPass or OnePass, something like that. It puts a little button right here so you can just generate passwords, different passwords for every website. So it makes it much harder for it to be hacked. Um, it's what I use. It's not showing up for me here because I am in a private mode so that all my personal information is not popping up for this video. But normally it puts a little button here so you can generate a password and then it saves it. When you come to log in, it will autofill that information in. Makes saving passwords a lot easier and a lot more difficult to hack because you do not want your Seller Central account to get hacked. So let's go ahead and click next here. All right, now it wants us to prove that we are a human and not a computer. And this is a very difficult one. Let's see if I can get it right. 7G or MG7NINA maybe. Hit continue. That was incorrect. Let's try another one. That one looks a little bit easier. And there we go. So now it's sent a OTP code to my email address here. So let me go ahead and grab that. All right, there we go. We've got that code in there now. And one thing that I want to quickly mention before I verify this, you'll notice that I used my business email address. I highly recommend you use a business email address as well, rather than using, you know, like Gmail or Hotmail, Yahoo, whatever the case may be, because it makes you look more like a professional business to Amazon and also the people who are going to be buying from you on Amazon. And when you look more professional, your account is more likely to get opened and you're likely to have less issues. So if you do not have a business email address yet, it's pretty easy to do. I use a company called SiteGround, siteground.com. I will put a link in the description down below. That'll be an affiliate link. So if you use that to sign up, I'll get a little cut of that at no additional cost to you. And I'll greatly appreciate that. Um, but you can get it as low as $2.99 a month for this promo that they have going on right now. And once you sign up, you can simply create an email address in SiteGround and then use that email address to open up an account. So definitely recommend you doing that if you don't already have a business email address. So let's go ahead and verify this email address. Next thing they're gonna do is ask you for a phone number. You can go ahead and put in your cell phone or a home phone if you have one of those. You could use a Google Voice number as well. You can sign up for a Google Voice number for free. I'm going to punch in my cell phone number here. And it sent me a one-time passcode to my cell phone. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in here. And then we'll hit create your Amazon account. All right, so there we go. That is verified. And now you're going to get to a screen like this. And it's going to tell you what you're going to need to open up the account. And essentially, you need a valid government ID. So either your driver's license or a passport. A recent bank statement or a credit card statement to essentially verify the address that you're going to be putting in here. A chargeable actual credit card, not a debit card, needs to be a credit card that you use here. And then a mobile phone to text message to uh, or the Google Voice number that you signed up for as well will work for that. Now, one thing you're going to want to make sure when you're using a bank account and a credit card, do not use a bank account and a credit card that you use for personal stuff. Get a business bank account that you can open up at any bank, typically for free. You could even open up online, perhaps with like Ally Bank or US Bank or something like that. And then get a business credit card. And you're going to want a separate credit card and a bank account so that you are not mixing purchases business with 
with the personal because you want that separate for accounting. All right. So I highly recommend it. Get a separate account. It I can't impress that upon you enough. Separate bank account, separate credit card. Now, the credit card that I use is the Capital One Spark business card. And I would recommend that you get that as well. I have the Spark 2% cash back. So for every dollar you spend, you get 2% of that in cash back. And that can add up really fast when you are making a lot of purchases from suppliers uh, for buying your inventory. Now, I teach primarily Amazon wholesale, which is selling other people's products on Amazon. So you're not having to import products and things like that. You can get them from US-based businesses, resell them on Amazon. And a lot of times you're gonna be able to use a credit card to make those purchases. So you're gonna get the 2% cash back. So I would highly recommend getting the Spark Capital One card if you're able to. If you don't have good enough credit to get a card like that, just get any credit card that you can open and use that as long as it's separate from your purchases. And I'll put the link to this Capital One Spark Business card down in the description as well so that you can just click on that and open up a Spark card if you prefer. And in addition to that, you're gonna need information about your business such as your EIN number, the name of your business, et cetera, which we'll go into in more detail here in just a moment. So let's hit begin here. And first thing here, select your business country. So we're gonna go ahead and select the United States. Select your business entity type. If you have a limited liability company, which is what I recommend, you're gonna be selecting privately owned business. If you don't have anything set up, you're going to select, no, I'm an individual, and you're going to sign up with your social security number instead of an EIN, which is your employee identification number. Now, if you don't have an LLC, I recommend getting an LLC. What an LLC is, which stands for Limited Liability Company, is it sets your business up separate from yourself so that you have legal protection if you were to get sued by someone you sell a product to. So let's say, for example, you sell someone a knife and they cut themselves with the knife or the knife breaks and they cut their hand because of that. If they decide to sue, the lawyer is going to sue you. They're going to sue Amazon. They're going to sue your supplier and they're going to sue the manufacturer. They're going to sue everybody. Having an LLC says that, okay, you can sue the LLC and take what the LLC has, but you can't sue me and take my personal house. You can't take what's in my checking account. So it helps add that layer of protection for you. Now, it's not foolproof. If you don't have everything separated, like I mentioned, separate bank account, separate credit card, and you're intermingling your personal and business, then they can pierce that LLC veil, as it's called, and get access to your personal. So that's one of the reasons it's so important to have that separate. You can use a company like LegalZoom to set up an LLC. I set up my LLC uh, myself, just following the paperwork. If you search how to set up an LLC in your state, you'll find it and you can set it up. But if you want to do it the quick and easy way, use a company like LegalZoom. I'll put that link down below as well for you. That'll be an affiliate link and you can use that to get set up. And then you're gonna need an employee identification number if you register an LLC. And what this is, this is your registration number with the federal government, with the IRS. So when you're filing taxes and opening business accounts, you're gonna use this EIN to specify yourself with the IRS, with the federal government. Very easy to do this yourself online. Just go to this website. I'll put this link down below. Hit apply now and you'll have an EIN very quickly. Uh, but you'll want to get your LLC first before that. So let's go ahead and select our privately owned business. 
put in your business name and that's going to be the name that you registered with this limited liability company with LLC as the LLC. So put mine in here and I confirm that I typed that correctly. I'll hit agree and continue. All right. Now on this page, we're going to again enter our business name, which should have brought over from the previous page. Go ahead and enter your company identification or registration number, which is going to be the EIN that you signed up for. Um, if you signed up as an individual, it's going to be your social security number. Now, a lot of this stuff, as you've already seen, is going to be blurred out because it is private information. We're going to enter our registered business address. Now, this has to be the address that you registered your business for. And you're going to want to make sure that you have your credit card registered to that address, your business bank account registered to that address, have some utility bills to that address, electric, water, something like that, because Amazon can ask you for all of those things to verify this address. All right, the number for verification. We can select the one that we entered previously here and click next. Now you're going to enter the primary contact information, which is probably going to be you. So go ahead and enter your information. If it's someone else, that's fine. You can do that as well. Uh, ideally, this is going to match the information that's on your business bank account and your business credit card and all of your utilities so that when they try to verify you, all the information is there country of citizenship, country of birth, birth date, And then for your identity proof, you can either use your driver's license or your passport. I'm going to go ahead and use my driver's license. Country of issue, United States. Uh, then we're going to enter driver's license number and the date of expiration. The first one here is day. I keep trying to put my month in the first one because that's typically what we do in the U.S., but they've got it a little different here. More of an international standard. All right, and then we're going to put our residential addresses in here. This may be the same as your business address if your registered business address is your home. That's completely fine if it is, uh, but if it's different, put your separate residential address here as well. And it might be different, you know, if you have a business office or if you have a warehouse, then it would be different. Select your phone number for verification on the home contact, which is fine if it's the same as your business, it doesn't matter. Confirm if the primary contact is a beneficial owner of the business. If you're the only owner of the business, you are the beneficial owner. If someone else is filling this out for you, like your lawyer, they would be a legal representative of the business only. Um, you as the owner are going to be the beneficial owner and a legal representative of the business. Um, I've added all the beneficial owners. If not, you can hit no, and then you can add additional ones. We'll go ahead and hit next. I confirm I'm acting on behalf of the registered business and you are, so we'll check that. Go ahead and click next. All right, so in this next section, what you're gonna need is your bank account number and the primary contact of the business is gonna have to be the name on that bank account number. And then to verify, they can either use your online banking credentials. So if you created an online account, they can just log right into it and verify it rapidly. Or you can submit your bank statement to verify it, whichever you would prefer. The online banking credentials, of course, is going to be a lot faster. Banking statement is going to be a little bit slower because someone will have to manually verify that most likely. 
And then you're going to need a valid credit card that you're going to use for the business. Again, separate bank account, separate credit card. We'll hit continue. All right. And this is where we're going to add in our bank account information. So let's go ahead and punch that in. You can search in this list to see if it has your bank account. I'm using a small local credit union, so it's not going to be in here. I highly doubt, and it's not in here. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click others. Enter the name of the bank account. Again, all of this will be blurred out. And we're going to enter the routing number. Now, you can typically get the routing number. It's going to be the number on the bottom of a check if you got that for the bank account. Now, a lot of us these days, of course, don't use checks. So you should also be able to get the routing number and your bank account number in the online account that you signed up for with the bank. So in my bank, I am simply going into my checking account that I have opened and clicking on where it says account details and I'm able to see the routing number and my ACH number or my account number. Uh, your bank should have that as well, whichever one you use. It might be a little bit different place, but you'll need to get that information. And the routing number is essentially just the number that's assigned to the bank. It tells Amazon what the bank is, what the name of the bank is. And then your account number is personal to you. Uh, that is for transferring money into your bank account. So we'll go ahead and click verify bank account. And bank account verification is pending. Now, since I wasn't able to select one of the banks from the list, it's looking like I'm not able to do that online account verification. So what they're going to do is probably request my bank account statements. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. So this is where they're going to have you enter your credit card number. They're going to charge you that $39.99 per month for the professional seller account. If you did the free account, of course, this would be free. Um, but as I recommend, sign up for the professional selling account. So go ahead and enter your credit card information in there. Select your billing address for that credit card. Make sure the address that you're selecting matches the billing address for the credit card and hit next. Next thing here, which trips up a lot of people, is the store name. The store name is what's going to show on Amazon when you see that sold by so-and-so. That is the name that people entered here. Uh, it's something that you can change in the back end of Amazon, but Ideally, Amazon wants this name to be something representative of your business. So you can put your actual business name in here. A lot of people don't like to do that because then it's easier to find your business. Uh, but Amazon and the government is getting more and more into this know your customer, which is to ensure that legitimate people are selling on Amazon. Legitimate people are um, selling the goods. It's not counterfeit goods. It's not a fraudulent company, things like that. So I believe very soon Amazon is going to require this to be your business account, but for now, or your business name, but for now you can enter anything. If you don't want to enter your business name, what I recommend is registering a DBA or a doing business as. This is what we've done for our business account or our uh, Amazon name. And so you register this with your state so that you can say, my company, my LLC company is doing business as this name. And that way the name you enter on Amazon can be different than your business. And it makes adds a little extra layer of protection from someone finding out who you are, who your business is, and being able to uh, maybe knock you off or um, copy your business, whatever the case may be, it makes fraud a little bit harder. Definitely not foolproof. Your DBA is going to be registered with the state and that is going to show the name of the business. Uh, but some people don't like to have the same name on there as their business. So if you do that, I recommend you register a DBA. 
I'll put this legal Zoom link down below. You can also register this directly in your state yourself. Just search for how to register a DBA in your state and you should find that link. So let's go ahead and enter our store name. The next is, do you have universal product codes for your UPCs? Now, universal product code is essentially this barcode on the back of pretty much every product. This one right here that you're seeing, and that is the barcode that companies scan when you buy a product. You definitely want UPCs for all of your products. Not every product that you sell from someone else is going to have UPCs in the wholesale world when we're selling other people's products. A majority have UPCs, but not all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, not all of our products have UPCs. Um, now, I just noticed that my name that I put here is an invalid store name. So the reason for that is because it has Amazon in it. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to something else. And now it says my name is available. Um, but I'm going to say no, not all of our products have UPCs because some may, will, some won't. If you're creating your own products in private label, you definitely want to get UPCs. So if that's what you're doing, you can hit yes here. But if you're going to sell other people's products, you never know. So I'm going to say no, not all of our products do. Uh, do you have a diversity certificate? If you do, you can go ahead and say yes. They'll probably have you enter that. And I've seen that Amazon has those starting to pop up in different places on the website. Um, I do not, so I'm going to go ahead and say no. Um, are you the manufacturer or the brand for any of your products? Now, this is if you are creating your own products, if you're creating private label products that are going to be your own brand that you own. If you're just going to sell other people's products doing the Amazon wholesale route or the retail arbitrage route where you're buying products from Walmart, Goodwill, places like that, and reselling them, flipping them on Amazon, then you are not the brand owner. Um, now, myself, we sell mostly other people's products, but we also make some of our own products. So I would go ahead and select some of them here. And then it would ask me if I have a trademark for those brands. And I do have a trademark. If you're creating your own products, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to get a trademark for your products because then you will be able to get brand registry and protect your products so no one else can change the listings. And you can do also a ton of other really cool things like make A plus content, uh, add more videos, and things like that. So you definitely want to trademark your product if you're going to create your own. If you're just selling other people's products, we can go ahead and just select no here. I do not have a trademark or I'm not the brand owner and it's not going to ask you that information. So we'll select no and then go ahead and click next. But definitely if you're making your own products, make sure to select yes or do some of them and say yes, you are going to have a trademark. So we'll go ahead and click next. So now we're just verifying all of the information that we entered up here at the top. And then it's gonna have me upload the photo of the front side of my driver's license and the back side of your driver's license. If you did your passport, it's gonna have you upload your passport. And then it's gonna have me upload my bank account statement, or I could also upload a credit card statement instead of a bank account statement. So select whichever one you are you have available there and upload that document. Both of them will show up here. I'll select a couple here just so you can see that process. Um, now you do not want to take a photo of your bank account statement. That you're going to want to download from your business uh, from your business website the uh, business bank account website, download a bank account statement. Now, those are only going to come once a month. So if you just opened your account, you're not going to have that yet. 
you're going to have to wait until they generate that typically at the beginning of every month. Uh, for your driver's license and your passport, that you can take a photo with your cell phone and upload it to Amazon. So now that I've uploaded those, this is what it looks like. This is just the name of the files. I just selected a random file, um, not an actual driver's license. And then the bank account statement, again, download the PDF and use that. We'll upload the bank account statement here. And now that has been uploaded. So we would go ahead and click next. Now we have the identity verification. So you can either join a video call with an Amazon associate, or you can take a photo of your face. So I'm going to select take a photo of your face. The uh, join a video call, you're literally going to jump on a video call with someone. So we'll check that box, click next, and start the identity check. We are in the United States. We are using the driver's license. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that. And to do this, I am going to pause my video. And blur this out, but. There we go. Processing my ID. And it wants me to process my barcode again. All right. So I'm unable to get the identity verification with the photo. So let's go ahead and try a video call. And let's go ahead and join. All right. Looks like I got to another page here. Let's try join call. Allow. Automatically we'll start once the associate joins the call. Okay, so now I am done. I just did the video verification call. You didn't see that video because they tell you at the beginning that you cannot record the call. So of course I'm not recording that. But essentially what happened is I got on with a gentleman who works at Amazon and he had me show my driver's license to the webcam. And he verified that information, made sure it matched my bank account statement and the driver's license that I uploaded. I had to re-upload my proper driver's license because I had entered, uh, I just selected a random file previously, so I had to re-upload that. Uh, but it wasn't any issue. He was super nice. Um, the main thing when you're dealing with Amazon is be professional, be cordial, and just be nice and give them what they're asking for. They're trying to do their job. Sometimes it can be frustrating, but you need to stay calm, be professional and give them what they want. Went through really easy. The guy was super nice. We got everything verified. So now you can see I'm at this page here. We've received your information. We'll reach out if they need anything else. The last thing that they are doing is this address verification. So they're sending me a postcard with a code on it that once I receive it, I'm going to have to go into my Seller Central account and enter it. 
Now, obviously, I'm not going to be at this page anymore. So when you actually log into Seller Central again, it's going to show you a little prompt for you to enter that postcard number. And then the postcard is going to show you uh, or tell you where you're supposed to enter that information as well. Um, so with that, that is the end of signing up for the Amazon account. Again, if you had any troubles, make sure you are giving Amazon everything they need and you will get registered. If you run into any roadblocks or anything like that, post a message in the comments and I'll see if I can help you by replying to that. And then also make sure you like and subscribe to our channel to get more videos just like this. I've got lots of other videos that are gonna show up on the screen here to help you start selling on Amazon. Over at Amazon Seller School, we specialize in the Amazon wholesale method which is allowing you to sell other people's products on Amazon. It makes it much more easy rather than creating your private label brands or simple, I should say. Selling on Amazon is never easy, but selling other people's products gets you started faster and allows you to start selling products on Amazon sooner. So definitely check out these other videos, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you later. Happy selling, everybody.